All right. As we all know, we are heading into recession and the economy is in trouble and real estate prices, uh, and boy, are we a nation obsessed by real estate uh, prices. Uh, we are, of course, a nation where uh, the family home residential property is the biggest asset that most people ever have or aspire to. So what is happening? Well, the place that we get a lot of our data on this is, of course, in the people buying or helping others buy and sell their real estate, um, realestate.co.nz. And for the latest data out of there, we are joined by their spokesperson, Vanessa Williams. Vanessa, welcome back on the platform. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, good morning, Sean, and lovely to be back. All right. Well, things have been soft. Let's say in most places prices are falling. Does that tra- trend show any sign of slowing? Can we con- quantify it? No, it hasn't shown any signs of slowing. We did see a little blip actually in December um, where it did pop back up over the $900,000 mark nationally, but it's dropped back down to around $890,000. Average house Jan. price. Yep, that's yep. the average asking price on the site. Um, but no, we haven't sort of seen that ease up. And, you know, with the way in which, because we've, we've got another um, OCR review coming about the 22nd of February. Yeah. Um, so I think there are a lot of nervous people out there, especially coming into an election year. Yeah, yeah, okay, so nervous. Is there anywhere that bucks that trend? And I have heard anecdotally that Queenstown, Central Otago, it's still going gangbusters there. Yeah, there's still quite a bit of demand there. And look, the average house price is down there around $1.35 million, which yeah. is, you know, when you compare that, so Auckland got up almost as close as 1.3 at the peak, and then yeah. it dropped down to about 1.1. So yeah. for, the, for the major centre, we've definitely seen that pull back, and, and um, the likes of Welling, Wellington's done the same. That sort of hit a million dollars at the peak, and it's around 870 now. But, yeah, there seems to still be a um, portion of the population that thinks, hey, the central Otago Lakes is the place to be and are still paying healthy prices for the property down there. All right. Um, is there anywhere that is tumbling, falling, softening uh, more rapidly than anywhere else? Uh, it's all pretty consistent um, ac- across New Zealand. But what is interesting is that um, we've also got quite a lot of shy vendors out there for the month of January. So when we look at um, January this year, they, we actually dropped back 16% in new listings when compared to January last yeah, year. Yeah. So that not, not only shows that, you know, I think there is that nervousness around buyers, around what an interest rate's going to do, what's going to happen with the government. But we've also got nervous vendors who are going, well, do I want to put my property on the market because the perception of the prices is going down. Yeah. Now, what I was, why I say that is that, yes, the prices have decreased since January last year, but if you bought your house 10 years ago, you're probably still making quite a healthy profit on it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see absolutely what you're saying. Um, and we don't know, can we look at the graphs that the trend so it's going to keep on softening? Uh, or do we reach a point where... You know, the drop in prices introduces new buyers and and things rise again because this is a cycle, isn't it? It, Absolutely. And that's definitely what the property market is. I think one of the biggest challenges that we've got as New Zealand is what happens when we do come into these recession times is that we actually stop building. So we see a lot of the um, developers and home builders go, oh, I can't, you know, afford to bankroll this or I'm struggling to get the investment to be able to continue the yeah. um, building. And then what happens is, is once we come out, of the, come out of these challenging times 12 months later, is that all that building has stopped, the demand comes back and we actually don't have enough houses again to service our population. So I think that's sort of where we've got the biggest challenges that kind of come and where the cycle bucks and, you know, trough, troughs and um, peaks across New Zealand is, is also due to that challenges with supply. Yeah. Vanessa, do people exit, real estate agents exit the industry at a time like this and then come back when there's more activity and more money in the market? Yeah, yes, we do see a bit of a, because um, what we've got is people who came into the industry in the last two years, it's been quite easy to sell property because mm. there's been so many buyers and so much available credit. What happens now is you see those real estate agents who have got the experience, who have been through a tougher market, who actually do prosper in these times and and perhaps those who haven't learnt how to negotiate and sell in a tough market and bring buyers and vendors together do suffer and potentially look for other roles. Yeah. Hey, Vanessa, I don't suppose, and it's a vain hope really, you wouldn't have any specific figures for Geraldine, would you? Unfortunately, no, I don't have any specific (laughs) figures for Geraldine. (laughs) That's quite a tiny suburb, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's not a suburb, it's a town. It's a small town in Canterbury. 
Uh, 35 k's from Timaru, and it's got all sorts of interesting stuff going. It's just the town we're featuring in our weather this morning. Oh, all right, I so see. tough times, um, and maybe not through, through through the end of it yet. But if uh, but Queenstown is okay. It's not just anecdotal; it is proving very, very resilient. Hey, Vanessa. Yeah, uh, just, just while um, just while we were chatting, I had a quick nosy. So, Geraldine, the average asking price in Geraldine is five hundred and ninety thousand. Um, that's up about thirty five percent on last year. So, that market is looking really healthy still, um, and the sales price basically matches it, which is quite interesting. That means obviously real estate agents in Geraldine are quite good at matching the market. It there, might so mean there's only been one house sold in Geraldine. <laughs> Well, then we have a look. Sold, sold in the last 12 months, 129 properties. Oh, okay. You, so it's not too bad, actually. you're a superstar, Vanessa. I was asking that completely <laughs> facetiously and thought she won't have any figures for Geraldine. And bang, there we go. That's the sort of data you gather at realestate.co.nz. Thank you very much indeed, Vanessa. We will talk to you again soon. Uh, Vanessa Thank Williams. You. Vanessa Williams, spokesperson from realestate.co.nz. There you go, 590 grand to buy a house in... Uh, and Geraldine, 120 or so sales in the last year. And pretty buoyant. Pretty buoyant in Geraldine. We're going to have to get the mayor on, aren't we? They didn't ask for this. This was just Ben's random pick of the town that was going to get its temperature. Its temperature today. Um, you can replay Michael's show now. We got it up. I solved that problem. I quite like the one arm uh, paper hanger. So I'm sitting here doing my radio show and we're just checking and dealing with the complaints and see I can all do, I can do all that while I'm on here. There are, there's a massive team of people, though, behind me who make that happen. Thanks for calling them up, Ruby, and getting it sorted. That's kind of the way it works here. Um, all right, any thoughts on real estate prices? And boy, Queenstown, yep, you can't keep a largely white tourist destination in the middle of South Island with lots of ski fields. You can't keep them, those buggers down, can you? Um, it is a different world, Central, in Queenstown and Wanaka. It is a different bloody world. Um, pretty hard to kick that economy to the curb. Uh, someone has just sent me a text. Why would AT, well, WTF it starts with, and we know what that means, um, would AT be ticketing cars in Auckland that are stuck due to flooding? If you have got any reports of council officers issuing tickets to cars that are clearly stuck, stranded, abandoned because of, of the floods, could you please let me know? And that is the sort of thing that Wayne Brown... Should front on, because those parking wardens are bloody drongos in that case, in that case.